Humans are pretty amazing. We have the ability to improve our innate skill set through a process known as learning, and seeing someone go through this process can be quite exhilarating. Mike Boyd has been an amazing person to follow for this reason. Whether he learned how to pick a lock, solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded, or any other of the myriad of amazing things and tricks he's learned, he's done all of them, mostly, by himself. So why the video title? Why shouldn't you learn some things, specifically fighting games, by yourself? My name is Seldom Sad Sam, and in this video, I'll go about answering just that. I'm a huge fan of channels such as Mike Boyd's. They show that with enough time and a willingness to learn, even some at first glance seemingly impossible or ridiculous skills can be learned by basically anyone all by themselves. However, most of the stuff learned on these channels are skills that I would qualify as being unsociable or uncommunicative, meaning that skills like learning to solve a Rubik's Cube, picking a lock, or blowing up wine glasses with just your voice don't in any way interact with any social relationships or are dependent on anybody else at all. By default, fighting games are the exact opposite. Learning fighting games is as social and as communicative as learning a language is. As in, the goal for these skills is to become able to interact in a sufficient way with another person slash player. These communicative skills therefore also don't have an end goal, like many uncommunicative skills might have. Where a Rubik's Cube goes from unsolved to solved, a fighting game won't be solved by you knowing how to deal with a certain situation. Since your opponent is always able to change the situation completely depending on their actions, or might even steer away from certain situations at all by noticing how you reacted to them before. Of course, I'm not saying that nothing in a fighting game can be figured out just by yourself. So before we look at why learning together is necessary, let's look at what you can, and maybe even should, figure out by yourself. Even though the broader picture of fighting games is an inherently sociable experience, this broader picture is made up of a whole slew of smaller pieces. Some of these smaller pieces, though part of the sociable whole, are themselves not reliant on or even related to the opponent, and can thus be fully learned, practiced and understood on our own. Think of the many things a tutorial will teach you, from how the health bars and timer work to a general explanation of the various system mechanics. All of these things can be seen, read and learned without the assistance of even a single other person. Of course, uncommunicativeness also applies to learning how to do moves and learning combos. Though arguably, it might be easier to have someone there to show you the ropes or teach you certain shortcuts, these can all still be learned all by your lonesome. That for the most part is it though. How, where and when to apply these moves or combos will all involve you going up against another player. Even if the tutorial tries to give example use cases for each move, they still need to be put into practice in a real match. And from here, we enter what makes our favorite genre a social one. Being social does not necessarily mean you have to enter a million discords, go to every local and have a talk with every opponent you face. Yo, how do I deal with that? Well, you deal with some bitches first. Get good scrub. It just means that learning fighting games further than what we have discussed so far will have to involve learning from the opponent, as we will be playing against another character. This can of course be done just by playing and adapting. You've learned your regular moves and your special moves, and just by paying attention to what works where and of course what doesn't will give you a cursory understanding of how to use the tools at your own disposal. The same way, by facing many different characters and hopefully many different players playing these different characters, will you learn what they are capable of and just by trial and error, what you can do against it. 
This entire learning system of trial and error can of course be expedited by involving your rivals and friends in your learning process. Where all by yourself, you may have figured out that blocking a certain thing works or that you can punish with light punch somewhere else, somebody else's involvement will help you figure out better ways of dealing with things way faster than you could ever do by yourself. They are actually plus if you block there, so it might be better if you do this or that, etc, etc. Like I said before, fighting games can't be solved. Andrew, Andy Lowe, recently made a great video on this very topic. As he said, fighting games are not a science, and it all boils down to your opponent. You might know that you are plus after a certain move, so my opponent will respect me, right? Nah mate, you're only minus if you're a bitch. Or my opponent just did something really, really unsafe, like throw out a random sweep, but they had V-Trigger, so they'll cancel it and make it safe, right? So I shouldn't punish it or I'll get clapped myself, right? Wait, they didn't activate V-Trigger? God damn! What makes fighting games so beautiful is the myriad of options you at all times have. Even seemingly useless things become useful by their sheer unexpectedness. But regardless, keep in mind that it is you versus them and them versus you. So involving the other party, sharing tips and lifting the veil on some tech you know will help improve both parties equally. And even as a total beginner, daring to ask how others learn to do simple moves, how they form their game plan or what they look for in learning and labbing a character will only show others your willingness to learn. The FGC is amazing and kind and we have long passed the mentality of saving shit for nationals. So, when watching any of the many amazing guides and tutorials out there, don't be afraid to ask why one option is strong and another is weak, or where you should apply any of these options in a real match. Even better than asking, hop in with a friend and try it out together. This may have been a little basic of a video, but with the many, many videos I have on this channel that are adjacent to this topic, I think it was time I tackled it directly. If you liked the video, hitting the like button and leaving a comment will really help, and it is greatly appreciated. So too is subscribing. If you want to find a community to learn with and from, why not join our often happy game club? We'd be happy to have you. Like always, I am seldom sad Sam, I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, take it easy.